Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let me rush to express my gratitude to Dr. Cofield, Reverend Jenkins, and everyone responsible for my being here. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge uh, these preacher pastors who I have the prestigious privilege of sharing the pulpit with. My assignment this evening is the first saying of Jesus from the cross as recorded in Luke chapter 23, 34, where Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Bruce is the name of the person responsible for producing the picture of a human brain that looks like a human hand. While the image is often overlooked by common people like myself, artists from all around the world find this image to be very intriguing. So much so that a team of prominent artists did everything that they could to locate Bruce so that they could have a conversation with him about what motivated him to create such a masterpiece. In the process of time, they were able to locate Bruce and schedule a time for them to sit down to discuss the beautiful masterpiece that Bruce had created. At some point in the conversation, one of the artists asks Bruce, what motivated you to create such a masterpiece? In response to that question, Bruce said in no uncertain terms, what happened was I fell asleep in the tub. And when I awoke, I noticed that my phone was about to fall in the water. And in an effort to keep my phone from falling in the water, I grabbed it with my right hand and accidentally took a picture of my left hand that had been underwater for at least 45 minutes. In other words, what you call a masterpiece was actually a mistake. In a real sense, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the the longer I live, the more I learn that much of what we admire about one another is just the result of a multiplicity of mistakes. Don't take my word for that. Just look at the person sitting to your left. What you are now looking at is a multiplicity of mistakes. Nobody decided to sit on your left side. Go ahead and take a look at the person sitting on your right side. And now what you are looking at is a multiplicity of mistakes. Oh, nobody decided to sit by you you this evening then go ahead and dig down in that duffel bag you call a purse pull out that thing you call a mirror and look back at the person looking at you and what you are now looking at ladies and gentlemen is a multiplicity of mistakes okay nobody said on your right side and nobody said on your left side you ain't got no mirror on hand then go up here and take a look at me what you are now looking at is a multiplicity of mistakes so much so that every once in a while some Somebody has the audacity to walk up to me and say, Clement, you're so smart. And I have to turn around and tell them I wasn't trying to be smart. I just happened to learn a few things from all the mistakes that I have made. Every once in a while, somebody would walk up to me and say, Clement, you dress so well. And I have to turn around and tell them I wasn't trying to dress well. I just got good at covering up all of the mistakes that I have made. Every once in a while, somebody would come up to me and they would compliment something about me and then I would have to turn around and tell them I ain't really as strong as you think I am. I just happen to gain some strength from bearing the burdens of all of the mistakes that I have made. It's just the reality that much of what people admire about us is just the result of a multiplicity of mistakes. In fact, this is the underlining message of Luke 23, 34 as we look at Jesus hanging from that cross. It was a mistake for Judas to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. It was a mistake for the religious leaders within the Jewish community to accuse Jesus of being an insurrectionist. It was a mistake for Pilate to send Jesus to Herod. It was a mistake for Herod to beat Jesus and put a gorgeous robe on him before sending him back to Pilate.
It was a mistake for Pilate to condemn Jesus to death. It was a mistake for the Roman soldiers to gamble for Jesus' clothes. It was a mistake for Pilate to put a subscription above Jesus' head that said, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. But God is able to take the many mistakes of sinful man to create the masterpiece of salvation. Preach, little black boy. I'm doing the best I can. That's a mouthful. I'm going to give it to you one more time. I said that God is able to take the many mistakes of sinful man to produce the masterpiece of salvation. I thought that you would be more excited about that. I really thought that you would be more excited to know that you serve a God who is able to take the many mistakes of sinful man and produce the masterpiece of salvation because I'm looking at some people who said some stuff you should not have said. I'm looking at some people that has been some places you should not have gone. I'm looking at some people who have done some things that you should not have done. But although you have done some things you should not have done and although you have said some things you should not have said and although you have been some places that you have not have gone, you sitting here looking as good as you look and smelling as good as you smell because you serve a God who's able to take the many mistakes of sinful man and produce a masterpiece. This is what we see as we read Luke 23, 34, understanding that God is able to use the many mistakes of sinful man. Jesus utters these words from the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Using the words of Jesus, Luke highlights the theological significance of what Jesus said and why Jesus said it. First, Luke notes what Jesus said. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. The word forgive in the text, ladies and gentlemen, comes from a Greek word that literally means to abandon. It literally means to leave. I, my only begotten son, in whom I am well pleased, is five years old now. But I remember the day that that boy was born. More than that, I remember the day it was time for him to get his first ever vaccinations. My wife came into the room and she said, I'm not going to take him to get no vaccinations because I can't stand to see them stick my ball with a needle. I said, ain't no problem. I'm a grown man. Give me the diaper bag. Give me the bottle. Give me the baby carry. I'll take him myself. I can handle it. We drove on down to the doctor's office. I, I put uh, him on the table. The pediatrician walked in with her needles and everything was going just fine until she stuck my boy with that needle and then my heart fell into my stomach to hear my baby scream so loudly I picked him up and started rubbing him trying to console him and then she said Mr. Hall hold him still I turned around she had another needle in her hand I said ma'am if you think that I'm about to stand here and let you stick my baby one more time you got another thing coming it was then that lady looked at me and said something so theologically profound that it pierced the cerebral cortex of my frontal lobe. It was so biblically correct that it took up my theological intellect because that lady looked at me and she said, Mr. Hall, if you can't take it, then what you need to do is you need to leave because in order for him to get what you, in order for him to accomplish what he, what you brought him for, then I need to do what I need to do. Y'all looking at me, but Lord have mercy, I wish y'all would listen to me because in a real sense ladies and gentlemen when Jesus says father forgive them uh, for, for they know not what they do he is literally saying to God Lord I need for you to leave me alone right now I need for you to leave me alone with these people right now because I know you God you can't stand to see them put nails in your boy's hand you can't stand to see them put spikes in your boy's feet you can't stand to see them put a crown of thorn on your boy's head and if you stay here you you go do something about this thing but if you do something about this thing you go for, you are not going to be able to fulfill the purpose for which I came I came to die on this cross so that I could save them from their sins father forgive them Luke notes the theological significance of what Jesus said but then he notes the theological significance of why Jesus said it Forgive them, for 
They do not even know what they're doing. The word know here in the text comes from the Greek word yuda. It's at least two words for know in the Greek. There be any Bible scholars here, then of course you know that there are at least four Greek words for the word no. But we just want to emphasize two of those Greek words, nosko and yuda. Nosko is the Greek word that the biblical scholars use when they want to uh, emphasize the knowledge that is obtained through being under the tutelage of a teacher. But in this text, Luke 23, 34, Luke uses the word yuda, which is the word biblical scholars use when they want to communicate the idea of you knowing something because you are looking at it. You know that the grass is green because you are looking at green grass. You know that the sky is blue because you are looking at a blue sky. Jesus says from the cross, Lord, they don't even know what they're looking at. If they knew what they were looking at, or better yet, if they knew who they were looking at, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. If they knew they were looking at the rose of Sharon, if they knew they were looking at the lily of the valley, if they knew that they were looking at the bright and morning star, if they knew that they were looking at the son of the only begotten God, they would not be putting nails in my hand. So forgive them, because they don't even know who I am. And because they don't know who I am, they are doing what they are doing, which suggests that if they knew who I was, they would not be doing what they were doing. But they are doing what they are doing because they don't know who I am. So, Father, I need for you to leave the scene right now and go ahead and let them make all of the mistakes that they are making. Go ahead and let them make the mistake of putting a nail in my hand. Go ahead and let them make the mistake of putting putting a hole in my side because through their mistakes the blood is going to flow and if the blood is going to flow the songwriter got something to sing about when he say all oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose his power so God go ahead and let them make mistake after mistake after mistake because we serve a God who is able to take the many mistakes of sinful man and create the masterpiece of salvation